Maguire planned for each section in the attack to be self-contained. The men were divided into three sections. Paddy May's group went to Drumbawn House Gate and took up position there. The second group, Michael O'Brien's group, was placed on the fair green with three men inside the wall at the junction opposite Hewitt's Hotel. That's at the side opposite where O'Toole's shop is now. There were only six rifles so that the shotguns of varying degrees of usefulness had to pad out the striking power of the flying column. The third group, Maguire's group, occupied the post office. The postmaster was kept in the post office throughout the morning. Seeing Maguire outside, the postmistress asked, Who was that man outside? Michael Collins, she was told. Well, do you think Mr Collins would like a cup of tea, she asked. The plan for the ambush was to let the car through until it reached Thrumbawn Gate, and by then the other two groups would each have a lorry in their sights. The guests in Hewitt's hotel were taken to a safer place. One of the women attempted to escape, but in fact she was recaptured. Meanwhile, at the same time, in Ballinrobe, scouts watched both the RIC and the military barracks, and when the RIC, in a car and a crossly tender, had drawn up at Birmingham's shop, Parik Feeney set out by bicycle to bring this information to Tormakidi. But he did not reach Maguire on time. Another volunteer who worked in Birmingham's, Patrick Vahey, was able to get through just ahead of the RIC convoy. The expected car came about 1pm and was allowed to pass as far as Drumbon when the attack was launched and the firing commenced. The driver and most of the passengers were probably killed in the first volley fired from Drumbon Gate. As a result of the attack, a black and tan named Constable Oakes and an RIC man, Constable Regan, were dead. The other two RIC men, Sergeant John Regan and Constable Flynn, were wounded, with Sergeant Regan later dying from his wounds. Six rifles and ammunition were taken from the car and the volunteers withdrew. It was now clear that instead of two lorries, only one lorry was with the car that day. At the sound of the firing, the Crossley halted between the first and second IRA positions and was fired on by O'Brien's unit, with the first volley killing RIC Constable Power and wounding RIC Constable Morrow in the arm, which was later amputated. The driver kept going as far as the hotel, where they carried their wounded and held off their attackers. Some of the men jumped in Hewitt's window and once inside the hotel, they came under fire from three IRA men behind the wall at the side of the hotel. But when the RIC heard the sound and where it was coming from, they in turn used rifle grenades and thus O'Brien withdrew his men. Tom Maguire came up from the centre position but the police were now safe inside the hotel. He had no immediate plan for attacking the hotel and to organise even an impromptu attempt on the building was going to take some time. There had been no preparations made to block roads or fell trees to delay reinforcements. It was essential to move the men away into the mountains and to disband the local volunteers, so Maguire set off along the upper slopes towards Shra. In the heat of the moment, the telephone in the post office was either forgotten or not properly put out of action. Or I see accounts say that the alarm was raised at 1.30pm when a phone call was received in Ballinrobe post office. The police and military in Ballinrobe were on the road for Tourmakidi within the hour.